Hey, Ross World, my money makes money. Blockchain. I need to explain blockchain. Now, there's many videos on YouTube to explain blockchain, and some of them, I looked at one today, it was kind of really gradual, I would say. It, it, it kind of went into steps. It took a five-year-old, it took a middle school person, I believe they did a college undergrad and a graduate and then an expert. It's probably in my history. If you can view my history, I'll keep it in there for you guys to reference it because it's probably going to explain it better than me. But here it is. Blockchain technology. So it's based upon a network of computers. Now, no one really knows the amount of computers that it entails, but all of these are decentralized decentralized so banks when you're making a transfer say for instance you're making a transfer from bank of america to usaa or char swap or whatever right it goes through a process you need a, a middleman because if i'm trying to transfer money to another person i either have to use my bank i either have to use paypal i have to use some sort of middleman some intermediary in order for that money to be transferred to that person and that information is stored on their centralized computer. Whereas though decentralized where the information is a network of computers decentralized. So I can do a direct transaction to that person, right? And yeah, you can do merchandise where you pay for merchandise and you have to really trust the person that they're going to send you it. But you can also do electronic or digital um, transaction where you're trying to transfer patents or copyrights or things of that nature. But anyway, when you're making these transactions, they have what they call an electronic ledger or just a ledger that all of these transactions are being recorded on, on all of these computers for everybody to see. Nothing is really hidden. And then it also has like a, I'm going to call it a cache, where if you continue to do business with that person, it keeps a history of it. And you really don't have to worry about someone hacking into it. Now, granted, anything is hackable. People just need the right resources, the right knowledge, the right equipment, etc. But this technology is far greater than what we're on right now. I think everybody is moving to 256-bit 200, encryption, which doubles the regular standard of 128. You may start to see that roll out now. But you have to say the blockchain technology is that we basically can cut out the middleman. That's basically where it is. And it's safe because it's not centralized where you go to Bank of America, keep bringing them up, right? Uh, Navy Federal, all uh, key bank. It doesn't matter what bank you at, guys. And all the information is stored right there. So everyone's getting their identity uh, stolen, their account numbers taken because they know exactly where it is. But when you have it decentralized and you have it encrypted on encryption on encryption and everyone is basically running the same software. So that's why it's a network and everything is talking. Numbers are being translated. And this is another thing. When you're doing this transaction, your bank account has nothing to do with it. They actually produce numbers. On the other hand, for that can be kind of your transaction ID code, okay? But once again, this may be in uh, binary code or some random number that the network has generated for you. And this is stored inside of a ledger in order to keep track of your transactions. And here's another thing. Everybody can see it. <laughs> I mean, everybody can see it, we know, within that particular ledger. So I have given out information on blockchain ETFs. Now, one is BLCN, the other one's BLOK. Um, one of the companies called Reality Shares, and the other one is called, man, I forgot, something transformal, okay? And these guys have been on TV how they are getting with companies and putting them part of their ETFs, those who are dedicating their time and research and development into blockchain technologies. This is a great thing. And I believe that eventually, right now, because the, the whole blockchain is new, so it's going to be volatile at first. But when people really start to implement this, I believe that it's going to take off. 
Now, do not, I repeat, do not get Bitcoin or, or Litcoin or Rithium or Ripple or any of those cryptocurrencies mixed up with blockchain. Okay, I'm going to let the cat out the bag. You don't need blockchain for Bitcoin. Bitcoin needs blockchain for it to exist. And everything behind blockchain is built on what? Cryptology. Cryptology. Now, I was surprised that as far as we know, we know that a Japanese guy, I forgot his name, came out with Bitcoin. And I believe, don't get me wrong because I don't remember off the top of my head, in order for him to get Bitcoin, he made blockchain. Don't quote me. But the point I'm making is we all know about cryptology from the Germans. Remember the Enigma? Yeah, the Enigma machine, the coding machine. Yeah, that they made, uh, that they was uh, figuring out. They got all those ideas and stuff from the Germans with cryptology. And then that was an English thing when they made the Enigma machine in Britain somewhere, in England somewhere. History. Anyway, the point I'm making is this. That whole blockchain technology is built upon cryptology, encrypting information, okay? And the different technologies they use for the network to exist in the software. So just know that it's decentralized. It's not, it's not stored at one place. Like, it's not stored at your house. <laughs> it's stored at you, your friends, and everybody else who in that network. You get what I'm trying to say? All right, you got it. Anyway, but don't forget about those two ETFs. Now, right now, they're, they're uh, anywhere between $20 and $23. Like I said, I bought two apiece. I may buy a few more. And if this was not simplified for you enough, if I was all over the board, because you know how I can get sometimes, I'm going to leave a link in the description for IBM. IBM has a whole blockchain portion of their website. And this is another thing. I downloaded and I read about 40 pages. It's 51 pages. They made blockchain for dummies. So if you're going to invest in this, if you're going to even be a person that use blockchain, if you're going to try to get into the whole cryptocurrency, you may want to understand what blockchain technology is all about. And I'm going to leave a link in the description that's going to send you right to the IBM website where you can download the blockchain dummies book. And I believe that book would explain it 10 times better than I, but they're going to be using particular words in the sector, in the field that may go over your head. And hopefully I did it in layman's terms to help you better understand it. This is Ross world where you got block and you got chains. I wish I had props. I'm out.